Papas. Um, I should say, hey, Revolution Golfers, Martin Tuck here, and I've got some awesome guys in for the golf school. We're doing some short game stuff today. And we're gonna talk about the business end here. Okay, how to move the business end to play some good golf. I see a lot of guys get in this pitch shot condition and they, they turn into robots. <laughs> and they don't really get the business end going, okay? So we're gonna learn about the business end. And this is, goes back and it dates back to my mentor, George Knudsen, who used to make a stand here with the club off the ground, with a narrow base, with flary feet, and he wouldn't let us have a backswing, guys, until we learned how to do this. Now notice, where'd my hands go? Did they chase down the target line, or did they work? They work around me to my left, don't they? Okay, well, he made us do it. We took a shoelace, and we put the shoelace in our left hand, and we pulled it behind our belt of our, by our left hip bone here, our lead hip bone, and they made this rotation and mild relocation, okay? So the behavior, the hands work, you know, we'll see how we do here. First shot, a little bit of a pick a speed. You know, so again, in these elements, you got to pick a speed, pace a speed, and face a speed. Whatever speed it is, and I'll probably land this by the fringe and then let it bobble on the green and see how we do here. Pick a speed, pace, and face. So here's the Sammy. We're going to put the Sammy in our left hip bone. And we're going to put it, you guys are going to learn how to use the business end of this device, okay? Where the inside, the grip of the golf club travels on a much smaller circle than the club head. Okay, you can see that there's the business end. This is the end where we have the weight, but we also have to get the body in concert with how we unwind and face the target, okay? My head's not going to stay down for a week on these shots. Narrow little stance, guys. I've got the weight of the club in my hands. I'm going to pick a speed. I'm going to pace and I'm going to face that speed. So does this, fellas, does this make sense for this little shot? Watch. No. Okay, why? Uh, it'd be over on yeah, the naturally it's nine miles too far, right? Yeah. So you guys are clever enough to say, okay, what speed do I need to pace and face? And then we're going to learn how, you notice how I've got the golf, the golf ball sort of forward-ish in my stance? I don't have a wide stance and I'm the ball way back, do I? Because I want to use the golf club, I want to use the sole, I want to use the bounce. I want to get the shaft pretty vertical, pretty vertical relative to the golf ball. And then I'm going to pick that speed, pace and face that. And that's more like it, I can make that one, right? So, guys, the lesson here is narrow stance, weight bias a little bit toward that lead side. We are going to let that club head move. Feel the weight of that club head, guys. As that gets back in front of me, we're going to pace and face that and see the dimension, how my, the butt of the club and the hip bone kind of work in relationship together. That's what we're working for, okay? Rather than something where we're trying to chase our arms way down the line, okay? Our body went from forward flex to rotation and extension. The club travels back up and in using the weight, feeling the weight in our hands and how we can have the rhythm of that to pace and face that. And with any luck, the club is gonna exchange with the ground nicely, the ball will react off the loft and away it'll go. Okay, any questions guys? Feel good about it? Okay, so Revolution Golfers, post your questions and comments down below and don't forget, narrow stance with these, pick a speed, pace and face that speed, and you're gonna find yourself on that lead heel, engaging the ground nicely with the ball coming off the club face really well. So thanks for watching, post those questions, I'll get to as many as I can.